Does this train have permission to enter the main line? How long is that unit coal train? And is there room for this other train to pass? And what's the dispatcher doing right now? Not to mention the yardmaster over in Delta Yard, sorting car cards. Hi, this is Burr Stewart, and join me for a video summarizing the highlights of two operating sessions held here on my HO scale model railroad called the Burlington Northern set in 1973 over a recent weekend in March 2024. I'll be your host for this tour of a bunch of random events which you can see here that I was able to capture on my iPhone while all the chaos was going on of 12 to 15 people operating trains in the basement. This is part 85 of my continuing series of Model Railroad Operations videos, so I hope you'll enjoy it as well as all the other videos on my channel. So at the beginning of the first session, we ran the Ballard Local up from Ballard onto the main line along the shore of Seattle. And you saw it there taking the main. Is road speed wide open? Yeah. But meanwhile, a loaded coal train was heading north from Portland up to Vancouver, British Columbia. And you can hear the squealing wheels from the ISE squealer that we recently installed. To everyone's delight, I might add. And this coal train was coming into the Bayside Yard in Everett. But another train was coming down from Bellingham and needed to meet it there, so we had a meet. And this shows just the highlights of the meet with the southbound train passing the coal train. The coal train is on the main and the freight train is on the siding. It probably should have been done the other way, but never mind. In the very far back, you can see some Milwaukee diesels that were also operating the Milwaukee Railroad. We'll get to that later. Now over here in Stacy Street, they were busy switching cars to try to make up the next train. While in the upper deck, which represents Burlington, Washington, another switcher was banging cars around in that yard. This is a beautiful yard, both on the prototype and the model. It's about five tracks. This beautiful Samish River Bridge, just to the north of it. And this is a few minutes later, and our coal train had made it all the way up there. This scene was built originally by Paul Scholes for his book on realistic model railroad scenery, and I was able to incorporate in the layout here after he published the book. Down below this scene, you can see the dispatcher's desk and the TV monitor for the Skykomish staging yard, and my dispatcher, Andy Dupree, busy at work, keeping track of which train orders he had issued and what he needed to do next. Meanwhile, over in the Argo yard in South Seattle, a train was coming in at the same time as the Lone Star local was switching cement hoppers. And so for a close-up of that, you can see the switcher coming out on one of the main tracks while the approaching mainline train is on the other. I just love these parallel moves that you can have when you have a lot of people over to run trains. This train features a Alco C636 as the third unit there. One of the most picturesque and brute-looking locomotives on the railroad. This train is coming out of staging from Portland, Oregon, making its way up towards Vancouver, British Columbia. But all of these different freight cars have to be switched out along the way, both in Seattle and Everett. Now here's the Everett Delta Yard, which had some switching going on. These loaded cars were coming out of the warehouser lumber mill were being switched to various places and you can see the 
dual gauge, narrow gauge terminus of the Denver and Rio Grande Western, which I have fictitiously located in Everett, Washington, and I like to call it the seventh division just for fun. We're still working on redoing the scenery in this area. Those narrow gauge tank cars are interchanging oil to standard gauge oil cars. And it looks like the yardmaster there has already picked up the loaded standard gauge cars. That oil rack was scratch built by Robin Peel just a few years ago and is modeled after the Chama oil loading facility in Chama, New Mexico on the prototypical Denver and Rio, Rio Grande Western. You can see the switcher is working on dual gauge track here. And we have our first bang. Bang! Very nice. This dark green car is a thrall door car, which was popular in the 1970s, but it didn't turn out to be practical. Now these loaded wood chip cars are probably going to be taken over to the Bayside yard, which is near the Scott Paper Company in Everett. Bang! Very nice. I'm not sure what the clickety-clack is coming from. Some other train than this one. This gives you a feeling for what a congested Delta yard looks like. Too many cars and not enough trains coming through to take the cars away. That seems to be a theme of most model railroad operating sessions. That Penn Central air slide covered hopper is typical of the era. And this view shows the car card sorting rack that we have in front of the Delta Yard to help the operator there figure out which cars to put where. Now over in Interbay Yard, we had three large diesels returning to the engine house. Underneath the Dravis Avenue overpass. This yard is located between the neighborhoods of Magnolia and Queen Anne in Seattle and is a great rail fanning spot. The yard doesn't look too congested right now, but you can see that the yardmaster is pulling cars in and out. Here comes another bang. You ready for it? Bang! An operating session is a lot of banging, I'm telling you that. Now here's a close-up of the switcher up in the north end of the yard. And this is a nice overview of all the chaos in the operating session. The top level there on the right is the Sky Comish Yard, and there's a local train called the Sky Local that goes up there and back. It takes a person about six hours to run that job. That's real hours, not scale hours. I really love taking shots of the zigzag squiggle of cars going in and out of a yard ladder. It just looks cool. On the left, you can see the staging yards in Bellingham, which is the very north end of the layout, on the, the upper decks. There are two upper decks there. There we go. All right, now uh, the Sky Local is doing some more switching up in Skycomish. 
while another train is getting ready to come up. So I guess the Sky Local is getting out of their way so they can move forward and come into the yard. That mountain in the background is Mount Index, and there's a loop around Mount Index, or near it, on the real main line of the Great Northern, now the Burlington Northern, and of course today the BNSF. Anyway, this is a eastbound manifest freight that's come out of Seattle and is heading toward Chicago. And all we can do with it is run it into the staging yard in Skykomish. Uh-oh. Scott was running it with a proto-throttle, but something happened to the engines. We don't know what. But we fixed it, and here we are coming back into Skykomish. There's that Alco C636 I mentioned. That was weathered by Brian Elchlip a few months back. You see the empty wood chip car that's coming out of the Scott paper plant. Uh-oh, look at that. The train broke apart. Uh-oh. I haven't mentioned that this channel is called Reality Model Railroading because of all the mistakes we make. But they happen in the real world, so I'm not trying to protect you from them. So now we have a train coming into the south end of Inner Bay Yard. This is a little later in the session. I'm not sure which train this is, but it's probably another... Well, no, it's only got two engines. It's probably a transfer from the Stacy Street Yard to the Inner Bay Yard. Stacy is south of downtown and Inner Bay is north of downtown. You can see the buildings of downtown on the far backdrop there on the right. There are three roads that cross the main line there in downtown, and that's why you hear all those grade crossing bells. On the right, you notice the auto loading rack area with the cars there. We lucked out by not having any auto carriers to block our views. Just a coincidence. All right, now we're going to go look at the rest of the yard as this cut is pulling in. As the scale house track on the left side there. Who's the engineer on this? That's the Dravis overpass. And you can see we have a switcher working some cars in the arrival departure yard while our mainline train has just pulled in. Well, meanwhile, over at Delta Y, some switching is going on in the Delta yard. Right at the same time where the mainline train is coming down from Skykomish, having departed originally from Minneapolis or Chicago, with three SD-45s on the lead and a long manifest train. There's the auto rack that will be parked where we were just looking in Inner Bay. And no doubt those cement hoppers will be sent back to the Lone Star Cement Company in South Seattle. Not sure what they're doing on a manifest through freight, but this is reality model railroading. Now this is the nice elk wilderness scene on the narrow gauge that I showed you recently in a short video. Now 
Now there you see the mainline train hugging the side of the hill next to Bayside Yard as it winds around towards Delta Yard. Now, meanwhile, we decided to run the jet job, which is Boeing's train that comes down from the 747 factory in Everett. And it comes down a very steep 5% grade and then switches like you saw there and runs caboose forward all the way back into Everett where the cars are forwarded on to the through trains. It's been really fun since uh, Atherin came out with the sound car cabooses that we can run the train caboose forward and still blow for grade crossings with the air whistle. This is a very specific prototype train that runs on this layout as close as we can get to the prototype. Now here, you've got a runaround taking place in Delta with those three big road engines, while on the low line, the jet job comes bombing through. How far do you need to pull? Pass the switch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the cars down and shove them on there. And I don't know the switch is well enough to be moving around while you're going through my view. What time do you come from the session's over? You can see that they're processing that long train that we saw earlier coming down the trestle. That gondola is full of aluminum chips. I'm not sure they would have shipped that in an open gondola, but that's what we do here. And there's our squealer and the famous squid bridge. As we roll into Bayside Yard, and for some reason the yardmaster suggested that he come in on the main line rather than the siding. There's some rule books that say, you know, give way to superior trains as soon as possible. What happens here is that the incoming cars from Boeing will be swapped out for the ones that need to be sent up to Boeing, and then he'll be able to run engine first back to that spur, and then run caboose forward up the spur. That was done for safety so that the engine would be at the bottom of the cut on that steep 5% grade. Now I wanted to show you a couple of pictures of what an operating session looks like with lots of people. It's still, there's still room. So uh, we really enjoy it. Well, after several years of uh, inactivity, I guess due to COVID, we finally ran the rock train from Bellingham down to South Seattle. And this is a fictitious operation where I decided that the Lone Star Cement Company needed some extra limestone from their normal shipment. So they asked the Milwaukee to provide it from their limestone junction branch. And that ended up being a pretty long train of ore jennies. This is an exciting train to run because these are live loads. That means if you derail and tip over a car, that limestone ballast is going to go all over the railroad, make a big mess. Anyway, I wanted you to enjoy the run of that train. It's slinking through the low line. And as you can see above, in the Delta Yard, they're still switching that train around that we saw go across the trestle.
the loaded wood chip car will be going to Scott Paper on the other side of the peninsula there. I was worried about it being superman. That is the problem. Now, meanwhile, the second shift of the Ballard local is coming up from Ballard and needs to get permission to get on the main line. And as you can see, the rock train is on the far track, which should be no problem. But there seems to be a different train on the near track. I guess we'll see what that is. I can see the rotating beacon in the distance there. That's pretty cool. Well, I don't know what that train is doing. I think that other train must have been doing some switching in Muckleteo and the dispatcher told it to hold so that the ballot local could come out. Somebody's throttle got a little out of control there. Is there a brake function on F9. here? F9. <laughs> Is there a brake function? Yeah, there's a brake function. I have all my brakes set to F9, and you can see it came very close to banging into the other tree. So far, so good. And meanwhile, there's the jet job parked in the tunnel portal there, leading up to the Boeing plant. That job's all finished now. So we have plenty of work to do still. We press F9 to release it. Okay. Well, at this point, the rock train has worked its way around to downtown Seattle. It looks good. It's just coming out of the south end of the Interbay Yard, and you can see one of these auto rack cars has been spotted. Well, meanwhile, the Interbay Yard crew has put together another long train that needs to go somewhere. guessing this is an eastbound train because we have a lot of scrap and intermodal. With any luck, we'll see that train again in a minute. Now that looks like the switcher that was on the Ballard local. So by now he's come back to Inner Bay and he's parking his engine. Mm -hmm. it's a squealer. The engine terminal is on the left of the yard. Oh, it's on the track right there. Against the yeah, wall. Absolutely. And that's where he's Electronic going, I think. That makes that noise. That's probably the same way it is triggered with the, um, the oh. crossing. Oh. No, it's a, there's a, actually the... Um, yeah, there you can see it. The engine tracks are the sanding towers on the left. Right, and then there's another one on that curve between Delta and Everett. I mean Delta and Bayside. 
I love those things though. Well, uh, I can't tell. I see your head in right now. Okay. Like and this is an overview shot of all the action. You've got the dispatcher down there on the left, a bunch of people over by Stacy Yard, swing dancers paying no attention to the action whatsoever. Looks like a train is getting ready to depart from Bayside Yard there. Oh, yeah, look at that. This might be a chance for another run by. <laughs> They're heading your way. Stop. <laughs> Bit of an incline there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What the heck is going on? That squealer is really cool. And this shows you how the train snakes around behind the Bayside. I don't really know. So I was on track three, so it's on you. They're keeping the speed down because of the speed restrictions in the yard. Well, another thing we haven't done for a while is to run the unit grain train. And there you see it sprawled all the way back the entire length of the inner bay. And here it is out on the main line. This 1973 era that we model is right when railroads started experimenting with these grain, unit grain trains. This is an eastbound move, so these would all be empties. And I don't think they normally would have run the empties as a full train, except when there was a rush. And they really needed the cars desperately for the farmers in the Midwest. So we'll assume that's what this is. Meanwhile, back in Inner Bay, we have some heavy engine movements. <laughs> Light, they're light, a uh, heavy light engine movement, along with some heavy engine bystanders that seem to have just arrived on the train. And back in Delta, the grain train appears to have made it around and is going to take the main line up to Sky Comish. Now up in Sky Comish, we put the Rainbow Bridge down so we could get this train around to the other side. There you can see the Rainbow Bridge.
It's a little scary that we don't have guardrails on this bridge. I mean, uh, any kind of physical barrier on the outside. So far, we haven't had a derailment, but I do have that on the work program. Install some plexiglass barriers to derailments. Yep, that's the green train. Now, of course, turning on the Rainbow Bridge like this means they'll now be facing westbound and it can act as a loaded grain train. But that's not going to happen in this session. I normally say we don't use the Rainbow Bridge during an op session. I think this must have been near the end of the session, and we said, ah, oh, let's go ahead and turn it. What's a good train without a red caboose at the end, right? Well, here's another shot of people in the west aisle of the layout. And here's the grain train crossing the Samish River Bridge just north of Burlington Yard. I'm there, man. I'm there day and night. It seems like That's all right. So it's good to see you guys. Man. Anything Close after 8 a.m. and before 8 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Is it okay if I keep resetting all the cows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are you at yeah, the Going in this direction, it must be a loaded grain train. The whole herd, the whole herd's infected. Grandma and Grandpa are on the bench. Coming south. Since we're celebrating the operation of the grain train, we thought we would run it around the layout again just for fun. So here you see it crossing the Samish River Bridge in all its glory, both the bridge and the grain train. Now the cow's crossing the, on the two by four. Mm -hmm. six cars. Two by six. Six cars, Jim. Three cars. And thanks to modeling the 1973 era, it's still perfectly normal to have a caboose on the train, even a red caboose. Yay. Here within Okay. Thank you. From where? Where, 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 push. where do they say it was coming from? Well, we'll check out. That's not oh, our bridge. Not our yard oh, okay. All right. Uh, let me give you a, a warning. Yeah, for that. you need paper for that. Right. And here we have the grain train continuing south from Bellingham to Seattle. What's the worst thing? And if I get it wrong, I'm not going to tell you. Trying to imitate prototype operations on a model railroad layout is a really challenging thing because the operations on the prototype continue to evolve during the period you're modeling. So the grain train is a great example. Uh, we like to run the grain train, but it only really ran in the western direction from the Midwest to the grain shipping ports of the Pacific Northwest 
And the cars were sent back east in regular freight trains, so they would only run the unit grain train when it was loaded. So, when you see a unit grain train here, it may or may not be uh, prototypically realistic. It's just that we like to see a unit grain train, so we run it. Another great example of reality model railroading. Here we see the grain train coming through Interbay Yard from north to south. And at the same time, uh -oh. we've got switch way. action oh. and other trains moving in the opposite direction. Always fun. It looks like our yard master is using a Jeep 9 to do his switching, which is good because it has a little more attractive effort than a SW1200 switcher. Now, up at Skykomish, we had an interesting accident where we were going to run the Pacific Zip, and it derailed. So when I was re-railing it, my sleeve accidentally knocked over one of the trailers, as you can see there on the hillside. And I was about to grab it and take it away, and I thought, wait a minute, this is a great opportunity for calling for a, a wreck train to come up or just a, a new type of scenic treatment on the layout. So I just left it there. Here we see the Pacific Zip uh, zipping from Chicago to Seattle with its short train of truck trailers. Very nice. You'd never know that underneath this train and under the Skycomish Yard is a seven-track staging yard representing Portland. But that's what we have to do in basements when we're building a long mainline layout. We have to hide the staging somewhere. There's the Rainbow Bridge on the top there, and we're coming around above the town of Makoteo. This is the, the mountain route. You could call this a spaghetti layout because there's so many tracks in different places. <laughs> On the left is the narrow gauge branch off to a yet to be built mine, but it's a nice bridge that Robin Peel built recently to carry it across the Delta Y there. This is your classic Pacific zip from a different view than I usually show you on the other side of that bridge. Now a few minutes later, the zip has come through Delta Yard and is heading down towards Del Everett Junction where it will uh, create a double track main line with the other branch to the Bayside Yard. Don't worry if you don't follow all this. We're just here to watch trains, right? <laughs> Yes. Meanwhile, coming into the Delta Y is the Darrington logger. 
which has just come out of a staging track that's hidden underneath that hillside and is making its way into Bayside across the Snohomish River Bridge. This is an old Atlas RS-11. There was a lumber mill on the Darrington Logger. So now the Pacific Zip is entering Inner Bay and blowing right past the engine terminal. And it's going to go on to the Argo Yard in South Seattle, where it will be quickly broken down. But meanwhile, the switcher is still busy at work in the yard. This is what I love about operating sessions, is that you have multiple trains going and for multiple purposes, multiple directions. And here, just for review again, we can appreciate the work of the dispatchers. And in this particular case, we had a visiting dispatcher with a lot of experience who was helping our resident dispatcher learn more about how to do the job even better. And here's an example of a dispatcher's log that shows the number of trains and the type of trains that we ran. You don't have to study it. I just wanted to show you that the dispatcher wasn't goofing off. Here's what it looked like with all the people in the room again on the second session. And at the very end of the session, we ran the birthday train because Brian Elchlip had lettered up a passenger car for my 70th birthday. And I wanted to give everybody a chance to celebrate with me. So we ran this passenger special uh, down from Burlington. You might have one in a room, yeah. And meanwhile, down in the inner bay yard, a consist of engines that had just come off a through train were backing into the engine terminal. <laughs> <laughs> that F unit number 752 didn't get repainted until I think it was 1977. So we run that old NP paint scheme very accurately, given that we're attempting to model 1973. And here's the passenger special approaching the squid bridge going over the squealer. We actually have some pictures of that XCB&Q silver E unit operating in the Pacific Northwest between Seattle and Bellingham. So I'm very pleased to have a chance to run it here. Well, the whole point of this video was to give you some highlights of two operating sessions that we held recently here on the Burlington Northern. I hope you've enjoyed it. It was just a few random shots that I could take with my cell phone. And we'll be getting into some detail about some of these trains later in future videos. 
But for now, this is Burr Stewart wishing you much fun with trains.